common interosseous artery continues as dash artery remember when we say continues as it means at the terminal end a medium size artery whenever it divides it does not divides into two branches of equal caliber one of the terminal branch is of wider caliber and the other one is a minor branch and you know that common interosseous artery divides into anterior and posterior interosseous artery so which artery is a continuation of common interosseous artery so here you seeing in this image that this is brachial artery it divides at the level of radial tuberosity or just at the level of neck of radius or just above to the radial tuberosity where you find it divides into its two branches one is ulnar artery and the other one is the radial artery so now in this diagram you are seeing this the superficial muscles of the front of forearm have been reflected out and now you are seeing that this artery radial artery is superficially placed if you reflect this muscle which covers radial artery that's called brachioradialis you get to find easily this artery radial artery which is accompanied by a nerve of its similar name and that is the superficial branch of radial nerve so when you see that this radial artery is accompanied by superficial branch of radial nerve with this you can remember that the artery and nerve both are superficially placed structures and they are only covered by a single muscle that is brachioradialis so the bulk of the front of forearm is perfused by this artery called ulnar artery ulnar artery provides blood to nearly all the muscles of the front of forearm so that is a major terminal branch of brachial artery so we can also say that ulnar artery is a continuation of brachial artery while radial artery is a minor branch of brachial artery then ulnar artery gives its largest branch in the forearm and this largest branch is common interosseous artery this is the largest branch of ulnar artery although it's very small in length then at the upper border of the interosseous membrane this common interosseous artery soon divides into its two terminal branches again the same funda will apply which i applied to the brachial artery when it's dividing into two terminal branches it will not divide into the two branches of equal caliber so remember that anterior interosseous artery is a major branch of common interosseous artery while posterior interosseous artery is a minor branch of common interosseous artery why because see compare the bulk of the muscles at the back of forearm you have less of musculature in the front of forearm you have more of bulk of muscles so more of blood is required in the front of forearm another thing if you remember that at the junction of the middle one third and lower one third at the interosseous membrane there is a perforation from where this anterior interosseous artery was perforating and reaching into the back of forearm and if you remember the structures passing below the extensor retinaculum in the fourth compartment it was not the posterior interosseous artery it is the anterior interosseous artery which passes below the extensor retinaculum so that also is a proof that this has a major role anterior interosseous artery so don't forget that this artery also provides nutritional branches to both these bones this is nutritional branch to radius and this one is nutritional branch to ulna and have you appreciated the direction of nutritional artery it is directed proximally to both the bones because the growing of these two bones radius and ulna is the distal 
so it has so much to provide blood nutrition to both radius and ulna so much of bulk of muscles in the front of forearm it also reaches into the back of forearm right so that means this anterior interosseous artery is continuation of common interosseous artery common interosseous artery continues as anterior interosseous artery